Hello everyone, welcome to Multilingual. They say it makes the world go round, and we certainly need it every single day. Today we're talking about money. <laughs> money is uncountable, so we say money is. We can't say money are, right? We can also say some money, a little or a little money, much money or a lot of money. First things first, what basic money vocabulary do you need to know? Let's begin. Is this a cash register, a till or a cash point? This is a till or a cash register. In the UK, the word till is used more often. The next one, is this a wallet, a purse or a bill? Hmm, this is a wallet and this is a purse. So a wallet is usually for men and a purse is for women. Next, is this a piggy bank, a collection box or a price tag? What do you think? We call it a collection box or a collection tin. If you collect money for charity, for example, you can use a collection box. This is a piggy bank. I used to have one when I was a kid. And a price tag is usually attached to the product. And you can see the price when you want to buy it. Is this a bank statement, an invoice or a bill? What do you think? It's a bank statement, right? Here you can see a bill or a banknote. And this is an invoice or a bill. So the word bill has two meanings. In the US, it's also a banknote. And what about this? Is it a recipe or a receipt? A recipe or a receipt? This is a tricky one, right? Well, this is a receipt. A piece of paper with a list of products you get from the cashier. And a recipe is helpful when cooking or baking something. Watch out! Let's repeat the words. The pronunciation is the recipe for cooking is a recipe, receipt, receipt. And of course, we have banknotes, notes or bills, what they call it in the US, coins and a debit or a credit card. If you need some cash, you go to the ATM, ATM. But more and more countries prefer credit cards, right? In Germany, for example, cash is still really popular. But when I was in Denmark, I didn't see any money at all. Sometimes I even saw signs saying, no cash, we accept only credit cards. What about your country? Is cash still accepted or do people prefer payments done by credit or debit cards? Let me know. Now let's look at some common verbs that we use with the word money. The first pair of verbs is to lend and to borrow. Could you lend me some money? Sure. How much do you want to borrow? So someone lends, gives me money and I borrow, take money from someone. That's the difference. To lend and to borrow. The next verb is to withdraw. Withdraw. Is there an ATM near here? I need to withdraw some money. To withdraw some money. To take money in cash out of an account. For this, you need to go either to the bank or usually to an ATM. To tip someone. That means to give someone extra money for a service in a restaurant or in a hotel. For example, I'd like to tip the hotel staff. They did an excellent job. To tip the hotel staff. To tip someone. To give tip. To leave some money for a service. In the second part of this video, let's learn some advanced vocabulary connected with money. The first one, to spend money on something sounds neutral. I'm sure you know this word. 
I spend a lot of money on my rent every month. And I also spend a lot of money on groceries. And now when the prices are going up, we have to spend even more money on groceries, on petrol or gas, whatever. So pay attention to the preposition spend on. You spend money on something. If you want to emphasize that it was really a lot of money, you can say to splash out, you know, like splash, splash, like with water. If you splash out, you spend a lot of money on something. For example, how much was the bag? Huh, I bet you splashed out. Right, I splashed out on it. It was quite expensive, but I liked it, so. The next one, to be in the red, to be in the red. If you spend more money than you have in your bank account, then you are in the red. You are in the red. When I was a student, I used to be in the red every single month. Yeah, those were the days, but fortunately they are over. What do you think is the opposite of this phrase? Hmm, to be in the blue, to be in the green, to be in the black. <laughs> to be in the green sounds really cool, right? But it's not the right expression. The right one is to be in the black. That sounds much better, right? To be in the black, it's much better than to be in the red. The next phrase, to be well off and to be rolling in it. To be rolling in it, to be well off. That clearly means to have a lot of money. Other ways of saying that someone is well off are to be loaded, to be wealthy, to be flush. Saying that someone is loaded gives it a slightly negative touch. Can you feel it when I say, the Millers, they are loaded, they are flush. These are informal ways of saying that someone is rich, someone is wealthy, loaded, flush. But I have an even better expression for you. Look at this one. To be born with a silver spoon in their mouth. If someone was born with a silver spoon in their mouth, then they were born in a rich family. Maybe you even have this expression in your native language. For example, what do you know about Steve? Well, Steve was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. This guy hasn't worked a single day in his entire life. What do you think? Is it good to be born with a silver spoon in your mouth? Hmm, not sure. I think it gives you a lot of advantages, but maybe also some disadvantages. The opposite of the expression to be well off is to be badly off. <laughs> to be badly off. Another one is to be in debt, in debt. Pay attention to the pronunciation, no B, to be in debt, to be hard up. And the last one, to make ends meet. I love this expression, to make ends meet. I think it's a funny one. To make ends meet means to have just enough money to pay for the things that you need. For example, again, my favorite example was my student times. When I was a student, it was hard to make ends meet. I was constantly in debt. <laughs> I remember. Fortunately, I'm better off now. I wish you to be better off and be rolling in it. That's it for today, guys. Thanks a lot for watching this video till the end. And I hope to see you in my next one. Bye, guys.